Oh, hi, it's Rob in the kitchen again today, and we're trying 72 hour sous vide boneless beef short ribs. I saw these at the grocery store and that marbling really caught my eye. Now they don't really let you feel the meat at the grocery store. They actually just look at you funny for asking, but these feel pretty good, firm, but not hard. Now the first thing to do is seasoning, starting with salt. This is Malden smoked sea salt. It helps provide a bit of smoky flavor to your meat. I use it a lot, and the big flakes and crystals are really pretty, especially for finishing salt. A regular kosher salt is fine. Just make sure to salt both sides. Don't forget the edges. Get it on there really good. The salt works its magic on the meat, pulling moisture out and putting flavor back in. There's a whole chemical reaction thing that goes on with the protein, but I'm not a food chemist. There's probably a YouTube video out there that explains it in great detail if you're interested. A rib rub. You can buy a rib rub at the grocery store, you can make your own. I made this a while back with granulated garlic, onion powder, celery salt, cumin, turmeric, and some smoked paprika. I don't really have a recipe, I was just throwing stuff together. Just garlic powder would be fine. Be generous. Remember the thing where the salt pulls moisture out and draws flavor in? This is the flavor that gets pulled in. Rib meat is generally tougher than the steak meats, so I like to really work the rub in, get it into all of those nooks and crannies. You see those cracks that show up as you flex the meat. Really massage it in there. The more surface area that you can cover, the more flavor you're going to impart. Freshly ground black pepper. Store-bought pepper in a can loses a lot of its volatility and flavor over time and tends to be bitter. So if you don't have a grinder and you have to get it at the store, get the freshest that you can. Now I decided to put these in vacuum bags right away, mostly because they were going to be in the aquarium for three days and they would have plenty of time for that flavor to really infuse. 130 degrees Fahrenheit, 327 Kelvin. Okay, I cheated a bit and pulled these a little early. It was somewhere between 69 and 70 hours, but it was dinner time and I was hungry. I wanted these ribs. Cut the bag open. Pour off the juices. Save these for later. I'm gonna use them to make a quick pan sauce. They smell really amazing right now. Sorry about the camera shake here. Piper was very interested in the meat and kept bumping into the tripod to get closer. There's one more thing that we gotta do to make these perfect and that is to add a crust. First, pat the meat dry. Quality paper towels are excellent for this. I'd recommend them over cloth towels unless you like doing a lot of laundry. Also, you can dehydrate the paper towels for a tasty apocalypse snack. I was going to sear these on the grill, but the propane ran out, so I was forced to use a cast iron pan on the stove top. Two, actually. The top one is acting as a cooking weight to keep the bottom in contact with the surface of the cast iron, and it worked pretty well. Bottom pan is the big one because I want to retain the heat as much as I can. I was able to get it up to 450 degrees, which is about where you want it. Added some grapeseed oil, a high smoke point oil, you could use avocado oil, peanut oil, canola oil. Don't use olive oil, because that will smoke way too early. When I saw it starting to smoke, drop these babies in, about three minutes on each side just to get a nice crust. Flip it over, do the same thing for the other side. Also did the edges by holding them with tongs, which is not really easy to show on camera. Once that was done, I melted about a third of a stick of butter and did some butter basting. Turns out that that can get really uncomfortable because a 12 inch cast iron skillet is kinda heavy. But I gotta say, the taste is worth it. Turn off the heat, deglaze the pan. I used the juices that we poured off earlier, got all of the fond on the bottom of the pan. You could add wine if you're into that kind of thing, but you don't really need to. This is just fine by itself. This is what I was left with. Beautiful crust, tender meat. Not as juicy as I would like, but we're gonna fix that right quick. And tasting. This is good, really good. Packed with flavor, tender, that crunchy crust, that little bit of sauce really makes it something special. This would be good for like a date night or special friends coming over. I'm going to have another piece. All right, guys, that's it for now. Thumbs up if you like it. Share, subscribe, comment. Let me know if you want to see more. 
I'll be back next week with something. I don't know what it's going to be. We'll find out.